you ever told a little lie at times just to play a trick on someone else? Or has someone ever played a trick on you? Maybe even played so many tricks with his friends that people never took him seriously and stopped believing anything he said. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today's story is a very old fable. That means it's a story which teaches us something about life and how to live a good life. It's about a young shepherd boy who keeps tricking people so much that everyone stops believing anything he says. Let's take a journey with The Boy Who Cried Wolf by Aesop. A boy called Peter lived with his parents in a village on the hillside. His parents, like most of the other people in the village, were sheep farmers. Everybody in the village took turns to look after the sheep, and when Peter was ten years old, he was considered old enough to take his turn at shepherding. But Peter was too easily bored, and he found it very tiresome being on the hillside with only sheep for company. So he would find ways to amuse himself running up rocks, climbing trees, chasing sheep. But nothing really kept him amused for very long. Then he hit upon a brilliant idea. He climbed to the top of the tallest tree and he started shouting towards the village. Wolf! 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 One of the villagers heard him and got all the other men together and armed with axes, hoes and forks. They ran out of the village to chase away the wolf and save their herd. Of course, when they got there, they nearly found Peter perched high up in his tree, laughing, and the sheep grazing peacefully. They were very annoyed with him. That night, Peter got a spanking from his mother and was sent to bed without any supper. For a while, life went on again as normal, and people forgot about the incident. Peter managed to behave himself whenever it was his turn to mind the sheep, until one day, he got really bored again. He picked up some sticks and running through where the sheep were grazing, he started hitting the sticks together and shouting, Wolf! 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 Sure enough, somebody in the village heard and before long, the men all came running up the hill armed with their sticks and axes and hoes and shovels, ready to chase away the big bad wolf and save their sheep and the poor shepherd boy. Imagine their consternation when they arrived in the field to see their herd grazing peacefully and Peter sitting on a big rock, laughing uncontrollably. That night Peter got a good telling off and was again sent to bed without any supper. For a few days people in the village went around moaning about Peter and his tricks but before long things settled down again and life resumed it's normal, uneventful course, and Peter had to do his turn at shepherding again every now and then. He decided he should behave himself. He really didn't want to upset everybody all the time, and he especially didn't want another one of his mother's scoldings. Then, one afternoon, when Peter was in the fields with his sheep, he noticed some of them were getting nervous. They started bleating and running hither and thither, Peter didn't know what was the cause of this strange behaviour. Sheep were running all over and making an ever louder racket. Peter got worried and decided to climb a tree so he could see what was going on. He balanced on a sturdy branch and looked around, and what he saw almost made him fall out of the tree. There was a great big hairy wolf chasing the sheep, biting at their legs, snapping at their tails. For a few seconds, Peter was speechless, and then he started shouting, Wolf! 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 In the village, an old man heard the shouting. Oh, no, not that Peter again, he said, shaking his head. What's going on? inquired another villager. It's that Peter again, he just can't help himself. That boy needs to be the centre of attention all the time, 
said another. Wait till his mother gets a hold of him, added yet another. Nobody believed that this time there really was a wolf and nobody got their hoe out or their axe or their shovel. At sunset, everyone wondered why Peter hadn't returned to the village with their sheep. They went up the hill to find him, (laughs) weeping. It really was a wolf here. The flock has scattered. I cried out, wolf, why didn't you come? (laughs) An old man tried to comfort Peter as they walked back to the village. We'll help you look for the lost sheep in the morning, he said, putting his arm around Peter. Nobody believes a liar, you know, even when he is telling the truth. Well, I wonder, what lesson did this fable teach you? This is actually such a famous fable and has been around for so long that it has become part of our language. You sometimes hear people saying, well, you better not cry wolf, and they are referring to this very fable. Maybe you can discuss with your mums and dads what you think this saying means about better not cry wolf. Oh, and mums and dads out there and teachers just want to let you know that we are now offering ways to bring my stories to life in your home or school by partnering with the educational organisation, if not you, who. They will be offering our listeners some hands-on activities around some of my stories that you can do together with your children. Check out KathleenPelly.com for more information. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with Stories.